When I started printing in 1980, Mountain Tape, we called it Sticky Pack. Does anybody still call it Sticky Pack here? Have you ever heard of that? In the US, everybody calls it Sticky Pack. Hey, the Sticky Pack. Sticky Pack is actually a brand name that stuck. <coughs> Came out of the box, Sticky Pack. Cool, cool name. It's like in Cuba. Uh, you know, Delco is a battery brand. Well, if a Cuban says to you, go get that battery, he says, and Delco, the Delco. Uh, refrigerator, Frigidaire is a brand, right? A Cuban will call a refrigerator, a refrigerator un frigidaire, frigidaire, see? So sometimes brands become the thing. And that's what happened with Sticky Back. Sticky Back was a name for 3M gray vinyl tape, a very hard tape. And back in that period of time, we did not have laser engraved ceramic rollers. We did not have photopolymer plates. They were just in development. As a matter of fact, the first time I saw a photopolymer plate, I thought, this is the worst thing I've ever seen. Please throw it away. It would not, the, tip, the ink didn't want it, it was rigid, there were all of these issues. And so, back when uh, I was first exposed in 1980 to mounting tape, it was basically one, maybe multiple brands, but there was not the cushion sticking back with all the various grades that we're seeing today, at least not to my knowledge, okay? Now, mounting tape adheres the plate to the cylinder, right? Very nice. But it does a little bit more than that. We now have all this variety, not just among manufacturers, but any given mounting tape manufacturer has a, 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 a portfolio of various mounting tape qualities with varying properties that allow you to get closer to achieving what you want to achieve, perhaps with this, than with that thing. So that you have a palette to select from. Now, mounting tape construction. Just like I started before with the polymer core of the plate, before I went to the base and to the uh, uh, contact sheet. I'm going to start with the main component, the uh, vinyl or foam layer. You've got the cylinder, you've got mounting tape on the cylinder, and then the plate goes on to that. Right? Okay. So now we're going to focus on that element right there. This is the foam or the vinyl? Uh, different things, different print types, uh, design elements, benefit or suffer <coughs> depending on what you put under that plate. A large solid area, for example, may require this to be vinyl, very hard. Because when you have a large plate printed, you have a large surface area with the same force applying. So that force is distributed among a larger surface area, and that plate does not impress into the substrate surface as it might were it a smaller surface area impressing on that surface. Okay? So when we print with large solids, there are something we want. Maybe when we print with finer things, there's something else that we want. But anyhow, whichever tape type it is, be it a vinyl or a foam or some sort of interesting proprietary material, they have a durometer just like uh, 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 photopolymer plates do. Your 
rollers in your press have neurometers? Oh, there's another variable, and we're not even going to talk about that. Uh, if you're not familiar with what durometer is, duro is a Spanish word, and it is Latin. Duro means hard. Duro meter, durometer, is a meter that measures the hardness on one hand, but it's funny how it also is the hardness property. So when I measure how hard a rubber or a resilient material is, um, <clears throat> I'm measuring the durometer with a durometer. So the device that measures the durometer of a, a material is a durometer. That's like saying I'm going to measure the thermo thermometer with a thermometer. I mean, it's kind of odd that they're both the same one, but they are. So the durometer, and the way it works is you have a gauge, and there's, there are these things called shore A, shore D, you know, B, thank you, and then different scales, if you will. But you have some kind of an indicator, right? And then you have a cylinder. Within that cylinder is a force mechanism, spring, calibrated, precise. And it has a little flat-tipped, specific surface area pin. And it's as simple as pressing it onto the rubber roller or your plate or your mounting tape until the base of this comes into contact with the surface and the harder the material, the less that pin will enter. So it's a very straightforward mechanical function that is calibrated. Okay? The nip rollers in your press have a durometer. You should measure them. I'm throwing this in here as a bonus, okay? <laughs> There's so much to this. It's such a beautiful craft. The rubber rollers that transfer ink to your analog roll have a specified durometer. And so on and so on. And if you don't think durometer is important, ask any offset person who has a that dog and dampening system, and maybe it's a PVC uh, 26 durometer roller, as soon as that roller starts to get a little too hard, you're going to start scumming and have all kinds of issues with uh, the water layer on the hydrophobic and hydrophilic surface of the plate and all that stuff like that. So to you offset people, you should have a, a peculiar, specific, a particular uh, appreciation of the value of the ROM, okay? Or, or how, how, just how much a little bit of difference in the ROM can make. So, it's the, a measure of a material's hard, hardness. And that material is usually resilient in that it yields some. So a resilient material has some yield. This floor is really non-resilient. So you would not use a durometer gauge to measure this. It, it has to be a material that already has some resilience, right? So a resilience is the ability of a material to absorb energy when it is deformed elastically, fancy definition, and release that energy upon unloading. So there is another hint. Mounting tapes have uh, rebound, okay? A mounting tape gets compressed, rebounds, compressed, rebounds continuously in the process, okay? And durometer is variable. Now, Hard or firm tapes, as I just suggested a few moments ago, tend to be used in solid line work, stuff like that. You have a large block, 
you have a logo. You're going to use a hard tail. Now, in the now web industry, my experience has been, I don't recall ever seeing vinyl hard tape being used. And I would probably guess, this is a total guess, that the reason is you really don't have images large enough that, that uh, require the additional pressure that would be imparted by having a firm substrate under that plate. So, but when you get into the wide web arena, now again, it really becomes very important. I used to, I used to, uh, well, that 65 inch WH press I operated. There was a General Electric product that had, in fact, a bar across the, the thing about like, uh, Looking like that, a rectangle. <coughs> it was across the whole web width, it was about that wide. For that huge surface area, because by the way, at any given moment, only a narrow area across that plate is coming into contact with the impression. Now we had a conflicting situation here. Bounce is worse with harder tapes but I need the harder tape in order to get the impression I need. So in that case, I might use a medium tape, okay? Medium tapes, they're a little bit odd. Um, uh, the ones I'm familiar with is almost a jelly type thing of in appearance. It's, it's got a resilience, and it may very well be a foam, but it's almost a substance between a foam and uh, solid vinyl, at least in, in, in feel, texture, and, and behavior. Now, now I had a medium tape, and I was able to kind of accommodate both reality, both necessities: adequate impression, a reduction in bounce. Then there are foam tapes, as opposed to vinyl or some other kind of thing. And they are uh, generally closed cell. So sometimes when foams are produced, I learned this, I, I'm a certified scuba diver. So I lived in Miami and I used to scuba dive in the, key, the Keys, the Florida Keys, and the reefs and all of that. I learned an interesting thing then about closed cell versus open cell. The closed cell material is literally that. Distributed throughout the inside of that foam is uh, little bubbles. Sometimes nitrogen introduced uh, in the processing, perhaps a chemical thing, I don't know. But you, you have just a large number, it just con cons consists of a little closed cells. Those tend to uh, have better recovery. You're compressing a closed cell, it wants to become the way it was again. If you, as opposed to when you have random or open cell that is just made, and maybe the result of a chemical uh, reaction that created this foam, and now you kind of, if you look at a micrograph of it, it's really almost like uh, a sponge that you would use in your kitchen. Various size cells, they cross into each other and all that. Those kinds of cells are going to compress and, and they're not going to rebound generally as completely and or as quickly. Just uh, think about it. So generally, when we're using uh, uh, foam mounting tapes, they're closed cells.